Hi folks, Philip Andrews here from photoshopelements.net and tonight we're presenting another e-seminar in our group of e-seminars available through the photoshopelements.net website. Remember we have a bunch of tips, tricks and tutorials available for you there and we release new videos and tips and techniques every week and you get notified about those via a newsletter. So tonight we're going to be looking at the 10 best steps towards a better elements workflow. So essentially what that means is we're going to be considering what are the key types of editing and enhancement steps that we need to perform on particular types of images. With the often overwhelming amount of uh, features and functions available inside Photoshop Elements, a lot of users can get a little confused about where to start when uh, they're faced with doing the editing and enhancement of a single image. So tonight what I thought I would do is actually look at a workflow from bringing your image in through to getting it ready for print or presentation um, and look at the various steps that we go through in order to get the best quality we can from the images that we have. Because so many of you are starting to shoot in RAW, I thought that I would work with a RAW file and show you the sorts of editing and enhancement options that we have with working with the raw file first of all and then taking it through to uh, the main editor space and elements for finishing up. So tonight what we're going to be doing is looking at in particular some global enhancements. These are enhancements that will actually apply to the whole of the image and they're things like white balance, um, establishing a black and white point uh, to our image which is often called pegging the black and white points and then doing things like enhancing shadows and tweaking highlights and I guess changing the contrast of the image uh, by doing those two things as well and maybe a little bit of overall brightening or darkening of the photo as well. And finally in, the last thing in our global enhancements will be applying some overall sharpening to the image. And it's not specific sharpening for output or specific sharpening of particular parts of the photo, just overall sharpening. Then we'll start to look at some localized enhancements. So these are types of changes that we would make to the image, to just part of the image rather than to the whole of the image. So these will include things like spot removal, dodging burning, um, paint on color changes, and some localized sharpening. So when I talk about localized adjustments, it's essentially applying adjustment to just part of the image. The very final thing that we'll look at is just how to apply some output sharpening. So you might realize that uh, most professionals actually apply sharpening at three different places in their workflow. At the beginning with overall sharpening, then some localized sharpening, and then also some output sharpening in order to optimize the image for the type of output that they're going to and it could be outputting to print or outputting to screen uh, via a digital projector or a big uh, TV screen or it could be outputting to the web. All of those different types of output requires different types of sharpening. Well enough talk, let me just jump in and share my screen with you now. So I'll just go through and open up my desktop. and make sure that we're sitting inside the organizer workspace. Now all, everything I'm going to work on tonight you could just as easily work with uh, Photoshop Elements 8 for Macintosh as well. Instead of using the organizer you would actually be working with the bridge um, browsing uh, utility that comes with Photoshop Elements 8 for Macintosh. So you can see an image here it's in its form coming straight from the camera um, and let me just show you an after image as well um, so that we can see uh, what we're working towards. Screen to update. Okay, so that's what we're working towards and this is the image that we have to start with. So you can see all the key components of the image is there, but we just need to massage it in a way that we can bring out the best bits of the photograph and turn it into something that's got a little bit more, um, I guess, mood to it, a little bit more drama to it as well. 
and just incidentally um, it did take me a little while to make sure that the uh, sky was in the right place and the, the clouds were in the right place when photographing this image and yes this is a bit of swampy ground here and yes I did get covered in leeches so uh, good photography uh, can often take you to places where you wouldn't normally go in order to get the shots that you want so let's go back to the original image here we are I'm just going to right click on this image. I'm inside the organizer workspace and just go down to edit with Photoshop elements. Remember if you're inside bridge, you can do pretty much the same thing, opening the image up into the main editor workspace. Now, because I'm working with um, a raw file, it will open the image initially into Adobe camera raw. Now Adobe camera raw is the raw editing program or utility that's available for uh, both Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. But there are some differences when you're working with these two different programs in the actual features that are available to you in Photoshop Elements and Photoshop. We only have uh, three tabs up here of features, whereas inside Photoshop we have a whole lot more. We also have a bunch more um, tools available to us in uh, Photoshop as well, which we don't have available here. Notice that um, one of the tools that we have available is the crop tool. And uh, you can see here that the edge of my um, filter is showing through because I'm using a wide angle lens and, and uh, a couple of different filters. So you can see the edge of my filter is showing through here on the corners of the image. So the first thing I'll do is just go down here and apply a little bit of a crop to the actual image. And it makes it more of a widescreen format as well. So the first thing we want to look at is adjusting the white balance of the image. Now it's not too bad, but if we come over to the right hand side, you'll see that if we click to as shot, this is the setting that uh, the image would have been photographed with coming out of the camera. We also notice that in this white balance drop down menu that we have a range of other settings that we can actually work with as well. You can see here we can work with the auto setting, daylight, cloudy, shade, tungsten, fluorescent, flash, or custom. You'll notice that those types of settings uh, reflect the types of and range of settings available in your camera. So on your camera, you probably have an auto white balance setting or one for daylight or one for cloudy scenes, etc. Well, they're the similar kind of settings available here. The idea is that you match the lighting conditions that you photographed under with the type of setting that you're working with or we can select auto and get the uh, utility to try and find the best option for us. If we're not happy with the option that's been selected, we can actually tweak that option by adjusting the temperature slider, which is in Kelvin. So if you know the Kelvin value of your light source, you can actually apply it here. Moving to the left adds blue to the light source. So it would account for the overly yellow light sources that you might have if you're shooting under tungsten. Moving to the right adds yellow to the light source and so it would account for the overly blue um, light source if you're shooting in the shade. The other thing that you can do is move um, the tint slider to the left to add green or to the right to add magenta to the image. And uh, this particular slider control is meant to help you remove some of the color casts associated with fluorescent or strip lighting. And the one final way that we can actually make changes to the color cast in the image or the white balance of the image is using the white balance tool, which you can see up on the toolbar. 